as a leader in an organization, do you consider yourself a leader that manages or a manager that leads? This can be confusing. Leaders seem to have the upper hand on glam when the managers seem to be the controlling type. So what is the difference between the two? And does it matter? Hello, this is Pierre Bienvenue from IMPI. We are here to help remove anxiety from leadership as they gain greater clarity and control. Within Walking Distance is a series giving tips, tools and reflections for leadership. If you are new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the links relevant for this video that you will find in the description box below. MP. So let's answer the question. What differentiates the leader from the manager and does it matter? Let's look at two simple definitions. A leader is a person who rules or guides or inspires others. A manager is someone who controls resources and expenditures. First observation, we could be describing the same person. No reason not to be both a leader and a manager. See, a team leader is a frontline manager and the chief operating officer has the management's responsibility to lead the organization. Second, what is missing from both definitions is why they do what they do, and it is to achieve a particular outcome or goal, isn't it? It's not it is no secret that both a leader and a manager get results through people. Look, that's the heading of a pocket card used by the U.S. supervisors in the 1940s to lead people. So you're telling me that U.S. supervisors of the 1940s led people? Sure, part of training within industry, one of the programs called Job Relation was created for supervisors to acquire leadership skills whereby foundations for good relations would be sustained. In other words, a workplace where supervisors inspire subordinates. After the war, training within industry is used in Japan as part of the broader program to reboot Japanese industry. Toyota leadership is listening, and to this day, TWI forms part of the Toyota production system. From first-line management to the chairman, managers coach their subordinates to think and become great leaders. So Toyota has great leaders because they have great managers that coach. Great leaders lead by example. How then can you lead leaders at the highest level if you don't know certain management practices about structures, cadence of accountability, process thinking, and the reality of creating value in general? Ask yourself, were great leaders great managers? Just to, to take examples from Abraham Lincoln, Napoleon Bonaparte, King Shaka Zulu, Henry Ford. Moses is recognized by many as one of the greatest leaders of all times. I don't have a picture of him. He needed good management skills and fortitude to keep more than one million grumbling people in the desert for 40 years, going nowhere. Jethro. His father-in-law is the first recorded consultant in history. Taking his advice, Moses established a management structure that enabled him to empower other leaders to manage the people of Israel and thus averted his burnout. Okay, let's see if we can dig a bit deeper. Here are two definitions for leader and manager. The first one, I share it for the fun of it because Seth Godin wrote it on the blog when I was scripting this episode. Leadership is not the act of making everyone happy. It's the ability to show up and help us to get to a place where, on balance, more of us are glad to be. The second definition is useful and practical. Mike Rother defines management as 
the systematic pursuit of desired conditions by utilizing human capabilities in a concerted way. If the desired condition is to deliver an order on time without defect and without breaking a sweat, then the time horizon is usually a few hours to a few weeks. If the desired condition is to move from delivering DVDs to your doorstep to delivering movies through the internet, then the time horizon to achieve the desired outcome and success is years. It takes leadership. The uncertainty is greater when the time horizon is further. The leader has vision. He or she has the ability to make out an uncertain future, yet establish certain goals to get there. The definition is also clearly pointing that even if a desired outcome is repetitive, e.g. delivering a quality product on time at the base cost, management is not a static thing. It takes a systematic pursuit of eliminating causes of variation. Stuff happens all the time. The manager needs to stabilize. The desired condition and the concerted way in the definition mean that there is alignment to a common purpose to achieve a result that applies to both the manager and the leader. You can't force a purpose on someone. So managers need to influence their subordinates, and that's leadership. Interestingly, my brother doesn't mention explicitly that results are delivered through processes, but by using human capability. It is implicit, though, that humans are capable of achieving results only through processes. Whether you use a shovel, a spacecraft, or a microphone, you are following processes. So the relationship between purpose, people, and process is what delivers results and achieves goals. I have added a link in the description box to a video that explains that relationship to drive operational excellence. So maybe there are two big differences between a leader and a manager. One, the leader has the ability to create a transformative vision of a possible future. Two, they also have an attraction to change and with it, a tolerance to ambiguity and uncertainty. Fear of change can be overcome with practice. Managing change as a habit reduces the fear of the unknown. It is a skill that can be taught and practiced by using scientific thinking and coaching. There too, I added a link to explain that. However, can becoming a visionary leader be taught? I don't have a fact-based opinion, but what do you think? Do you want to leave your thoughts in the comment section? Great managers are endured to become great leaders due to their inability to be or become visionary. Can they overcome this? So let's recap. You cannot be a good manager if you don't lead. And great leaders must have management skills. Otherwise, they are disconnected from reality. A manager gets short-term results through people by focusing on processes. A leader gets long-term results through people by focusing on purpose. The advantage great leaders have over managers is to convince other people to follow them towards a better future that initially only them can see. You know that entrepreneurial aptitude to see an opportunity in the future that others don't see. They have the courage to push through for the long haul in spite of uncertainty. And that, my dear viewer, in my book, is the definition of faith. And this is the good quote for this episode. Paul of Tarsus wrote, Now, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. So, let me get it right. You are telling us that managers don't have faith. No, 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 I didn't say that. I just wanted to challenge your guys' thinking. Okay. Anyway, I said 
that the manager and the leader can be the same person. But hold on a sec. At the end of the day, managers are appointed. Leaders are chosen. Everything rises or falls on leadership. Isn't this beautiful? If you are one of the first three people able to identify the location of this view, you can meet with me for a free hour of leadership coaching. Just write the location in the comment section and send me an email at wwd at impi.solutions. Here is a clue. From this view, we can see the mother of all tourist destinations. Also, you may have a need to improve on your leadership skills, turn them into good habits, or you need support to transform your organization. I can help you. Feel free to connect. I'll be posting the next episode in two weeks. In the meantime, lead well.